Hi folks, this piece of hardware is really amazing. It's low profile plus cooler for Raspberry Pi 5. It's from 52Pi. In the previous episode about Extreme Raspberry Pi 5, we've seen how to add a PCIe extension board with four M.2 slots. But this time we're gonna add uh, this excellent cooler, which will enable Raspberry Pi 5 to run constantly at three gigahertz with its video core running at one gigahertz. The cooler not only looks like a hot rod supercharger, but it also has amazing cooling capacity. With its fan constantly running at full speed, it's able to cool down your Raspberry Pi 5 running at 2.4 GHz to almost the room temperature, which is truly amazing. Raspberry Pi 5 running at 3 GHz at full load Processing course and graphics force heats up to about 45 degrees and remains at this value constantly during the full load. Afterwards, it drops back to about the room temperature. Raspberry Pi 5 performs rock solid. So you can do whatever you want on the Raspberry Pi OS. You can open Windows, you can start applications, uh, you can run Docker, you can run YouTube videos, not only one, but a number of them at the same time. During stress testing, I assured that not only processor cores, but also graphics cores remained at full load for the duration of the test. The cooling capacity of the new cooler was also evident when the processing load got back to idle. It took just a few seconds for the temperature of of Raspberry Pi cores to drop back to a few degrees about the room temperature. Now when you know how well it works you're probably asking yourself how you could do it yourself. To achieve maximum performance as well as maximum functionality you have to think out of the frame. Most of extension boards for Raspberry Pi 5 are either heads or underboards. This means that they have to completely cover Raspberry Pi 5 or they have to be placed underneath it. In both cases, this is impossible with the type of cooler that I'm using now. However, in the previous episode of Extreme Raspberry Pi 5, we have already seen that it is possible to mount certain boards sideways instead of underneath or above Raspberry Pi 5. But to do so, you usually need a little bit of ingenuity to reroute power supply. PCIe boards usually include a very short PCIe data cable, but also connect to the 40 pin expansion port to draw power, usually 5 volts. Many of the extension cards also need 3.3 volt signal that indicates when a Raspberry Pi 5 is in operation, but this one can also be obtained from PCIe bus. The next single is of course ground, which is much better on 40 pin expansion port than on the PCIe bus. There are also other extension cards, for example, Ethernet hat that also needs powering. However, this one can be powered from USB ports. Uh, you can watch this video to see how it works. It's very useful. You can use it practically with any kind of computer and also with Extreme Raspberry Pi 5, but it doesn't necessarily be connected through PCIe bus. This is another example, a PCIe interface board with M.2 KE connector, which is usually used to connect Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communication cards. What is interesting with this extension board uh, is that it does not occupy all the 40 pins of the expansion port, but it uh, rather connects to just a few of them. This way it's much easier to determine which signals are actually needed on the extension cable. There are also underboards, which usually have a number of inbuilt spring-loaded pins that connect to the 40 pin expansion board pins from the bottom side. For example, this PCI switchboard with two M.2 connectors has only three spring loaded pins, of which two are important because one of them is used for ground and the other two are used for 5 volts power supply. It's very easy to connect this board, therefore, sideways. You just have to solder the spring loaded pins, which is not particularly difficult to do if you know which one is ground and which one is 5 volts. A blueprint of 40 pin expansion connector is also available from the internet so it's very easy to see where the pins are connected. Let's get to the final question. Is Extreme Raspberry Pi 5 worth to build? Is it satisfying? Yes it is. It's not easy to do all this, but on the other hand, it's much quicker than an ordinary Raspberry Pi without uh, SSD drives, uh, without this magnificent cooler that is very capable and without 
an industrial power supply that makes it possible to power on this kind of Raspberry Pi 5 that is more power Thursday than an ordinary Raspberry Pi 5. Power on manager, which I've developed myself, is also an important feature to prevent accidental powering on after a powered outage and also to be able to lock Raspberry Pi 5 from other users and to be able to start it remotely as well as turn it off. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons. Also check the notification bell. By pressing like and subscribe buttons, you are also supporting this channel and you are making it possible for me to make more videos like this one. The next video is coming soon. Bye.